Raw Stuff with Roger. Hey guys, today we are going to make a 720 by 1280 size picture and this is going to be a transform hierarchy video. Basically it's fancy words for connecting things together to make them look kind of cool. So we're going to start with a uh, background layer. We're going to name our layers today. We're going to be really fancy. So we're going to call this background layer, give it some blue, and then we're going to maybe pick the right tool there. I'm going to show you. I, I generally use this one when I'm doing sketching. So here we go, making some mountains. And we're going to be kind of quick and fast with this process because we're not really worried about this. We're just making something that goes behind what we're making. So we're not going to be too stressed about what this looks like. And uh, it's just going to be a really kind of quick take on what we're doing. And I'm just making some mountains and making some snow. And when I color it in, you'll see that that's what it is. And really, there's not very much importance here because this is going to be um, kind of just muted in the background. So it's, it's, not, it's really there for reference so that when we look at the... Um, the thing we're going to create today, then it kind of looks cool. So I like to smudge it out a little bit because it's going to be in the background. And I'll just smudge around the edges and you see how it kind of gives it that misty look. It's perfect for mountains because really what you want with mountains is not a lot of perfect definition because if you're looking at a mountain, you're usually looking from pretty far away. So it usually looks a little rough or a little like kind of like behind the clouds, a little, just a little bit muted. So I'm going to try and clean it up a little bit here and just smush things around and pick a color and just go back in and kind of define things a little more. Now I'll go back and forth with this because sometimes I get a little particular. I could have just left it the way it was and that would have been totally fine whatever kind of mountains you guys want to make are great as well you can make purple mountains blue mountains green um, I'd advise you not to make too much blue mountains just because the sky is blue but you can go ahead and do that if you want and we're gonna call this background and we're gonna add another what are we gonna add there mm -doo 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 layer there we go, and we're going to name this one right away. I'm going to call it body, because this is going to be the body of the uh, dragon we're going to do today. Now we're going to do a pretty simple dragon, and when I do simple characters, I like to start out with kind of an action line, or a line to kind of depict where I'm going with the sketch. And I think I just don't like the way those mountains look. So I'm going to go in and, and rough them up even a little bit more with the smudge tool. So by that, I just mean I'm going to make it look just a little more faded into the background. Because when you have clean lines, it makes things look close. So if you're doing any kind of animation or illustration work, clean lines are for the close things. The further they are back in the scene or kind of in that space you're creating the rougher the lines can be. It doesn't really matter what they, if they're sharp in the background. Well, it does because you don't want them to be sharp. So here we're going to go and create our action line. And then I go, yep, yeah, I kind of like that. So I like to start with this when I'm making simple little dragon kind of creatures. And it just looks like a worm. I know. It looks, like a, it looks like a little earthworm, but then we add a few more lines and all of a sudden it starts to look a little more like a dragon. And we're not doing a scary dragon today. Some days we'll do scary dragons. You can make your dragon look as scary as you want. This dragon is going to be kind of like a cute little, cute little dragon-y person or cute little dragon-y guy or girl. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to give them an eyeball. Some people will give dragons a snake eye or kind of like a cat eye look, like a diamond. Um, 
Again, we're not going for the scary look, so today we're going to keep things a little more rounded. We are going to give this dragon some big teeth, but I find if you if you put the teeth a little bit spaced, it doesn't make the dragon look as mean or dangerous. Now here's a trick I like to use. Watch it. If I tap on the pencil, it'll switch from eraser to the drawing tool that you have used. Now a lot of art programs have this similar tap tool. Some people like it. You can shut it off and turn it on. Um, I enjoy it. I use it pretty consistently in my art uh, because I make a lot of mistakes. Right? Art, a lot of art is just consistency and and doing things until your body recognizes how to do them. It's muscle memory. It's like when you learn to ride a bike. Sometimes you fall off a couple times and then eventually your body goes, oh yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. So it's kind of funny how art works the same way where you can draw things a whole bunch of times and they don't look that great and then all of a sudden one time you'll draw it and it'll look great and your body will remember that. So if you're having struggles with art, just remember it's about consistency and you know, if you're really struggling, you can pull up pictures of, of dragons from the internet and you can put simple dragons or dragons from simple shapes and you can find some really good tutorials on YouTube of how to draw dragons. Mine is just all from that one original line. And I like purple. Purple seems to be my jam for coloring things lately. So I will sometimes... So you look here, I'm going, okay, I'm trying to get this right. And sometimes with the double tap and triple tap, I get a little confused. So then I, I go in and go, okay, I want the dragon to be bright purple with dark purple dots. Now I adjusted that thing at the top that just made the color go really close to the lines. So you can see it almost runs in halfway through the line a little bit. So I'm going to keep coloring here and then I'm going to go, oh yes, I do not want purple teeth. Not today. Some, you know, you can make your teeth any kind of color you want. Who knows what color dragon's teeth are? Maybe they are purple. Maybe they're purple. Maybe they're yellow. Who knows? So as you can see, my color ran there because I didn't have quite the filled in lines. So I'm just going to check my lines again, which you got to do every once in a while. I'm going to pick up my color and keep going and then realize, oh, wait a minute. Where am I going to realize that? Right here. Uh, oops. Yep. I made a mistake. So I'm going to get out of the color picker for a sec and I'm going to press the back until I'm where I want to be and then go, okay, there we go. That's where I want it to be. But I got to fix those lines up again. And that's okay. Art is always a process. So just take your time. And I'm going to go back to this yellow and fill in the rest here. Take a darker color or lighter color. Depends on how you want it to look. I always zoom out and then zoom back in and go, yeah, that's kind of the way I wanted it to look. Now the teeth, I'm going for white or teeth. Sometimes I'll go for different colors and sometimes in the eyeball I'll go for a different color. Now you'll see here, I'll be like, hmm, what color do we want in that eyeball? Then we're going to shoot for like an orangey red and go, yep, yep, nope, nope, not what I wanted. We're going to call that good. And we're going to work here with the another layer, and we're going to call this one the front wing. There we go. Now, some people will just use the Apple Pencil and draw in the little area. I don't think it really makes a difference the way you do it. I prefer the little keyboard thing. Now, I'll make the shoulder first when I'm making a wing a lot of the time. So it's just like a U shape. And then I'll kind of make the rest of the wing because you'll see here I'll have to erase it a couple times because I never get a wing right the first time. It always takes a trial and error because it goes with the shape of the body and you just kind of kind of got a guess and then take a look at it and you look at it from different angles and you go yeah okay so a lot of the dragon wings or even bat wings have these little spots in them or you would call the space where it's just kind of like a, a skin type material in there 
and I'm gonna recreate the colors of the body because I want it to all flow together like one thing. So I'm gonna put those circles in there. And you can use any kind of shapes you want. Some, some dragons have spots, some of them don't. Some of them have stripes. Some of them are different color on the top than they are on the bottom, you know. And I'm not getting into any fancy shading today because really what I want to show you is more about the, the hierarchy and how to do it. I'm just kind of doing a quick dragon here. Even at this point, I'm going to tap on it and I'm going to go down to duplicate. And I'm going to put it underneath the body because that's where I want it to be. And I'm going to change the name, rename. Now, I can just erase it or I go in here and then hit the X, and then I don't have to type in both words. And we're going to call this one Backwing. And this becomes important in a second here, because we're going to have a new layer. It's going to be called the Transform Layer. And then in that, we can click on it, and we move first our body, because that's what we want in charge. And then the front wing gets connected to the body. The back wing, we also want to connect to the body, not to the front wing. If this was an arm, we would have the shoulder, the arm, and then the hand. So you can make a hierarchy, five things, two things, one things, but you can have certain things connected. So essentially you're making like a puppet rig. And now you gotta remember to, to click off that little square at the top in order to, to get this little guy to move around. And all I'm doing is centering where I want things to move. So. There's how that moves, and then if you if you click on the wings, you want them to move from the body. So you have to move that little that little pin there that you can barely kind of see. You have to move that where you want. Now, what's great about this is that now you're kind of controlling everything from the body. Now I'm going to go to about frame 50, and I'm going to hit the extend. I like to do things this way. And then I also like to make a, a split. Be this way I'm having it, this part doesn't connect to the other part. So anything I do in terms of transforming the layer doesn't stay transformed. So I'm going to go in here. And first I'm going to make the background go all the way. Because I like to be able to see the background all the time. So we're going to make it extend, and then I know where everything is. So I'm going to take the body first, and I'm going to make it a little smaller, because this is not a big, huge dragon. And the great thing is that I can do that just by doing the body. So anything I do with the body, the wings are going to follow. So now that it's like they're connected with little pins or tacks, or however you want to think about it, that's how they're connected. So I'm going to go to the body. And I'm just going to move it around here. And it really just wants to resize today. But sometimes you just got to figure out where to click it to, to get it moved. And I'm going to add a keyframe. And sometimes auto keyframing is on. I shut it off in the, uh, in the menu. You can go in and shut off auto keyframing. I enjoy having it shut off. Some people enjoy having it on. I like to have to click on it every time because... I tend to move things around a lot, so it just helps me not kind of overly do things. Now this is going to take a little playing with it to figure out exactly how to how to do it and exactly the way you want it set up. So sometimes you might have to add keyframes, sometimes you might have to take them away. And you can see here I got it flowing from the back to the front. And what I'm going to want to do is change the size. Now, what's kind of cool here is you can click on the size right there and add the keyframe for the size. And now in the middle here, it's just a slight bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it a little bit bigger in the middle. I'm going to make sure I'm on the size and add the keyframe. And then at the end, I'm going to make it back down kind of to where it was at the beginning. A little bit smaller. I'm going to add the keyframe. And now when I play it, you'll notice the dragon gets a little bit bigger and then smaller again. Kind of like he's kind of going flying towards the camera and then flying away. So it gives a little extra movement to the flight. 
And now we're just going to move the wings. And we're going to we're going to go under the rotation for the keyframe because all we're doing is rotating it around this that, that point that we have there. So don't forget to add the keyframes and add them under rotation. Now you don't want to add the, those kind of frames every five seconds. You like or every five frames. You want to leave 10, 15, sometimes 20 frames in between because it's going to slowly move through that range of motion. And if you make it too fast, it'll look like it's frantically flying. Maybe like a hummingbird. Maybe it'd be a hummingbird dragon then. So whatever you want to do, that's okay. And if you click on the body, you can move the body as well from up and down and right and left in whichever way you want. So this movement part, you're going to have to kind of play around with it to get it the way you want. Now I'm just kind of making the wings beat kind of close to each other so they're flapping like a bird's wings kind of in the same timing you can change it up a little bit and do things any way you like but i'm kind of liking the motion here i'm checking it and i'm going yep that's good so now i'm going to see the extra frames i have here i'm just going to take them away i'm going to delete them because i do not need the extras double click delete I double click and delete this and then I realize wow that did not have a bunch of frames whoops the background's gone so double tap you're fine I brought it back so now I'm gonna have to make sure I double tap and I go split frame and then I can delete it without deleting the rest so I make sure everything I delete is not connected and then we got one wing left and there we go now there it is, and if I hit that little rotating circle, and we can watch the whole thing over and over. I'm gonna try and get it in the center frame here. And there you go, transform hierarchy, or flappy wings. Whichever way you wanna call it, now you know how to rig a character for movement, and you can use any kind of character you want for this, and it's kinda of cool in that way. All right, thank you very much, and you guys have a great day.